Welcome to the Spillover Effect podcast, where we have conversations about organizations, how to create positive workplace experience. And I have Matt Tipton on the podcast today. And Matt Tipton is the owner of YHR, Proactive Education First HR business partner that specializes in business strategy, syncing with people strategy. He is a keynote speaker, a writer that has been featured in Disrupt, Disruptor of Disrupt HR New Orleans, the creator of leadership series, Let's Talk, currently on our tour discussing out-of-the-box benefit strategies, um, reimagining benefits, a local trainer for all things culture, and bringing the employee to employee gap, best known as you don't know what you don't know. Welcome, Matt Tipton. All right. Thank you good for having me, Michael. Good Appreciate to see it, bud. You, man. How yeah. you been? I've been good. I've been good. I've been good. Yeah, yeah. business is good, and uh, this is exciting. Thank you for having me here. Yeah, I'm glad uh, for you coming on the podcast, man. Uh, I know we met a couple of months ago, and that's right. Um, everything about you doing what you're doing to your business, and uh, really working with uh, great companies and businesses and organizations, and so. I yeah. just really want to dive into some great, great content and sure. really just talk about what it means to uh, just create positive workplace experiences. So before we get into that, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about your background. OK, you, absolutely. So um, I, Oklahoma, Oklahoma boy right here. So this is where I'm from. Grew up uh, going to school in McLeod, Oklahoma. And uh, from there, went to the University of Central Oklahoma and graduated with a human resources degree. And I'm one of those kind of rare breeds that uh, graduate with an HR degree and I did nothing but HR. Mm -hmm. uh, I stayed in it. I know that's not the uh, the norm these days, um, depending on what kind of path uh, you take, but um, that was me. Uh, worked in the big corporate environment, worked in small business, and uh, that kind of brought me to today. I started a, an HR firm about five years ago, right in there, and uh, really, on the premise of just HR education, working with small business, I love uh, entrepreneurs, I love business owners, I love culture, and um, really just kind of felt like this was an opportunity to to be surrounded in that environment on a regular basis and uh, and 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 uh, do what we're doing now. Yeah. yeah. So, so tell us a little bit. Um, you know, since your background is in HR, what is the role of HR? What do you feel like? What when you really get down to the crux of it, what would you say? What is the role of HR? Because I think some people get a little confused about what does that mean? What does HR really do? Because usually when people think of HR, they think of uh, compliance. Absolutely. They think of making you stay by the rules, <laughs> making sure we're that the do's you do and don'ts people. Right. Yeah. 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 Or, do's you know, and don'ts. Um, you know, we got to go fire this person. So right. they, there's really right. like sometimes a negative connotation. It's, with HR. So what would you say the role of HR you is? You know, it's very unfortunate, but, you know, it's kind of, it's a little bit of all of that. And, you know, HR is a little bit, and I use this term a lot, it's kind of a black hole. I mean, as far as um, really, depending on which organization you walk into. In fact, when I meet a business owner for the first time and they're kind of trying to fill me out and I'm trying to understand them more. Um, and they always ask me like, well, Matt, you know, I've been told that we need to have HR here. So tell me what you do. And I said, well, before I answer that question, mm -hmm. let me ask you, what is HR to you? And because everything that you just said is exactly that kind of loaded bag of just preconceived what they've known it to be in other places, whether that's a court, very large corporate environment that they may have came from, stepped out of mm -hmm. and you know, they didn't like it at all. Right. And so why would I want to bring that into now my new business and what I'm trying to do here? Like, where does that where does that really fit in? So uh, that is a difficult question to answer. I will tell you that the components of HR. Yeah, some of it is policy. Mm -hmm. You know, some of it is truly operating in that space that you want to be that support arm for the business owner to be able to let them know that, hey, as you're growing a business, there are going to be certain things along the way that we need to make sure we're in line with the government on. You know, right. it's that policy side. I know it's not exciting, um, but it, it's that support arm for the business. And right. I think that's and that extends to extends into policy. It extends into culture, mm -hmm. it extends into, OK, let's always be forward thinking about what are we trying to do from a mission statement, from a values and 
how do we convey that to our employees the right way, right. that they're truly grasping it. And I think as you kind of bleed into that HR business partner role, that's really where you step into into that picture in alignment with the business. Right. And, and you can be that. You can be that for the business owner and you play a huge role for employees mm-hmm. just to have another outlet, another yeah. communication channel. And um, and that and that's what I you know that's kind of how I see it, and I see that as the the role going forward for HR is truly being a business partner and culture and employees, and hopefully being innovators right there with the business owners when it comes to how we're you know attracting talent and what that looks like. Mm-hmm. So what you, for your for your company now, what do you go in and do when you go in and you hate helping these organizations, and what do you say your role is? Because I know you do a lot of. Yeah. Uh, business strategies That's right. with, with organizations, but you really put an emphasis on, I like what you say, the people strategy. The and people so what, strategy. What, what do you really go in and what are you really trying to help them with? What solution are you trying to really uh, solve and say, hey, let's deal with this. Let's deal with this problem. And I have mm-hmm. a solution. And you come in as a part of you know your, your, your ideas. What do you want to help them implement? Absolutely. Well, we got to get them to, first off, we got to get them to that place where, um, that they really can fulfill their vision. And, you know, depending on what that is, whether that's revenue based or people based or whatever it may be, um, that they, where they see their business going, they need to be able to have the freedom to do that. I mean, Mm -hmm. that's why they went into business. They went into business for their passion. We know that, um, as we go into business, not all of us were born business owners. Right. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a passion that we have and we have a service or a product or something that we know people want. So where do we go from there? Mm-hmm. Um, I like to use this analogy that, you know, a lot of businesses, they're, they're built on uh, the, the house that's built on sand. Yeah. And, um, and that's fine. Like there really is, you know, that's, there's, I, there is nothing wrong with that. You do what you have to do to get your vision out there. Mm-hmm. But then there's going to be a point where, you know, if you want to build a second story on that house, you want to build a skyscraper, you know, you want to take it to just just be really just be ready to take off um, with with where your company's going. You're going to have to come in and put in a foundation. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, kind of at the beginning of your question, you were asking me, you know, where do where do I start with businesses? And a lot of it is laying helping them understand how we lay that foundation and that foundation looks a little bit different depending on who you're working with. There is that compliance side, um, but it's also all right. Let's build, uh, you know, a a structure that that looks like you, the business owner. Right. You know, if I'm going to be an employee and I'm going to work here, I'm working for you. How do I how do I know that I'm going to be successful here? Mm-hmm. You know, what does that look like? And that can come in different ways. I mean, that can be. You know, that can come in a mission statement that can come in, you know, visions and values, but then also having the policy and the outlets and the communication channels uh, that backs that up. Yeah. And communication, that is um, that's the key. I mean, that is that is the key. That is so true, because what you usually find a lot of times in organizations, there's just not really great communication going on. It's the killer. Yeah. And so people. Yeah. Um. Uh, are really trying to figure out what are we doing in this organization? <laughs> um, you what's know, my or, role? Yeah, you know, what's what, my role? Where do, what, I, where do I fit where in? Where are we at? Yes. And, and, oh, absolutely. Um, and, you know, every now and then you might get a, a memo or you get a, a, a email blast and people yeah. are just trying to figure out like, what are we, where, where, where are we going? And part of that is communication really um, always coming down and talking about what the vision is yeah. and what is our next step is. If we've accomplished some goals, what that next step is and communicating that what to does your that employees. Look like? Yeah. And really saying here, 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 where we're going. And so I think a leadership plays a big role in that. What do you, what, what do you think about that? And, and, and that really, that communication piece really, you know, well, communicating to your employees. Yes. That, where are we going? So that is that, and really, I mean, we're really getting to the crux of it now. I mean, that is, that's everything. And being able to not just communicate to your employees, but be able to listen to your employees. And that's where, um, you know, as in leadership, we need to be, you need to have these communication channels that doesn't hinder the business. You know, a lot of people be like, oh, I just don't have time for that. I can't, I can't spend all day talking to my employees. And, and we get that, but we do have to incorporate communication channels that effectively lets those employees know their involvement and what they're doing and and the goals that we're achieving as a business. 
And the more that they feel involved and more they feel pulled in, I mean, that's that's going to that's going to be the buy in. You're going to see that on your return on investment. Mm -hmm. It's going to be there. The numbers, uh, you know, back up when we talk about retention numbers and what that means as far as a growth curve mm -hmm. and what those employees can do for you. And if we ever lose sight of that and um, and they're they're walking out the door because they don't feel involved or they don't feel communicated with, they're going to go find it somewhere else. Right. And I think that's just uh, that's just hugely uh, important that we get into those communication channels that makes the most sense for the business. Yeah. And I just think with all the technologies, there's no way we shouldn't be communicating. There, you know, just, there isn't. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We got email, and sometimes that stuff, technology can overwhelm us too. It but can. I think with so many uh, technology tools that we have right. nowadays, like we should be in a constant state of communication with employees, that's right. a constant state of communications within our teams. Leadership should be um, just being consistent in doing that. The, the solutions are there. And, mm -hmm. and these businesses, you know, these communication channels that are being developed, that are technology that's being pushed out there. I mean, they, they've done their homework. Mm -hmm. They know that this is a, in the HR world when it comes to people software and what exists. I mean, that, that, that's upwards of a billion dollar industry. Right. You know, they didn't invent that overnight. They, they've done their studies. They know this is where this is right. going. And we just have to look at, how that does make sense for us. Mm -hmm. You know, when I uh, visit with employees, especially, unfortunately, sometimes as an exit interview because they're leaving the business, uh, it's amazing. It, so, sadly, it's not as surprising anymore when I hear somebody say, you know, I just didn't, I didn't feel like I really just, you know, was part of the business. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I just didn't, I never heard from my supervisor. I never really knew if I was doing good or yeah. not doing good. And, and, I, you know, we try and coach on that. I call them feedback loops. Yeah. And that's becoming more and more of a common term. Um, well, it's, I, it's, it's definitely common with millennials. There you so go. Feedback, you got to have the loop. is like huge. Like one that's of the right. things that I think a lot of managers, they try to want to understand um, right. leaders, millennials. But one of their biggest um, things is they want feedback. And not feedback every two months. I right. might need feedback every week. Or you might and, need to bring them in yeah. uh, every, every uh, you know, day. Some sure, some people want sure. every day. Like, I mean, and I know that's a lot, but some people are like, well, I need feedback. Um, and so I think it's really important. But even with feedback, um, and I'm, I'm curious for you, is that starting to get, that language starting to get pushed back to in terms of feedback? I really like this. Um, yeah. I heard somebody saying, I thought it was good. Instead of feedback, let's say feed forward. <laughs> And so I like that. I like, I like that. Uh, I, I like do that like language, that. But are you starting to hear a lot of pushback with feedback? It's it's the communication around feedback is really about time. That's really what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. It's uh, when we put something in place. the The biggest part of the pushback is, I don't have time to talk to somebody every day. You know, I, I don't have time to to stroke their ego every day and tell them that they're doing a good job and. And that's always the pushback. I'm running a business uh, or if it's a supervisor, you know, I've got too many things here. They need to know that they're doing a good job and just keep doing it. And, you know, that's that is the, the give and take. And that's where we try and find those solutions that are that are in between there. But what we can't do is go back to the days of we wait, you know, a, a year I mean, this is really dated now, but if anybody's out there still doing this, like we need to have a conversation because we can't wait a year to tell somebody what they haven't Absolutely. been doing right. Absolutely. And, and, I mean, this is, and if you think about that, how crazy that is, yeah. but it still takes place Absolutely. Um, that, that that is, that that even sounds reasonable. Cause think about from a, you know, we can get into the dollars and cents of mm -hmm. it, that if you're not helping somebody progress in their, in their job because they failed at some point along the line, all they've done is that that's compounded for however many months before you decided to talk to them. Yeah. You've only hurt yourself. <clears throat> You've only hurt the the business that that individual isn't growing. Um, and, and that truly is more and more. That's the expectation yeah, is that should, we are communi communicating back regularly. You definitely shouldn't be waiting a year to do oh, any type yeah. of review. Yeah. yeah. And I, I'm thankfully more and more, that's going away. And, yeah. and, and I, and I'm very, uh, excited to see that, but I can't really say, I mean, even five years ago when, uh, um, you know, stepping into what I do now, you know, consulting with multiple businesses, I would still run into one here and there. Yeah. And then that would have that process. And 
that's one of the first conversations we would have. Yeah, and then, uh, and then the, on yeah. top of that, the review is uh, is has a very negative connotation True. about it. So it's 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 really looking at what you're um, doing wrong. And so, uh, you know, I, I really want to get away from. I think organizations need to get away from like what you're just doing wrong. Um, Because a lot of my background is in positive psychology, and we have to look at not only what people are doing wrong, but what are people doing right. Exactly. And so, uh, um, if you are giving feedback, just don't uh, just be critical of them, but you also have to um, do some feed forward. Do some feed. Do do some feed forward. I want to use that. I like that. And uh, yeah, it's it's positive. It's moving forward. It is, uh, you know, giving them the tools, right. you know, maybe there was something there that, uh, and we talk about this a lot when we talk, we talk about giving back to our employees. Sometimes it's education, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, we have to be able to provide them the education, the tools to make sure they really have what they need to be successful in that position. Um, I have, this is uh, one of the things that, that does frustrate me a little bit, but you can appreciate it on the front end, but a lot of employers don't fully understand the the undertaking they hire on potential and i love the idea of hiring on potential i and say oh, i really want to give this person a chance they never really done this before but i know they can do it and and then and then failure happens mm-hmm. you know they fell in that position and they and the business owner is like man i just really thought uh, that they could have been successful and i'm just sad it didn't work out and then you have an employee that essentially you were giving an opportunity that no longer works there, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that, what sense does that make? Right. And so one of the things that I caution employers about when they start talking about hiring on, on potential, which again, I'm a fan of, I love it. I love being able to see that. And like, I want to, I want, I want to see that grow in that individual. Um, but what that means is you better have time. Hiring on potential means you need to be able to have the time to invest Absolutely. in that individual. And those are, again, you need to build that into just like the feedback loops. Mm-hmm. You've got to be able to build that into your organization and be intentional about it. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the biggest things when it comes to culture. It's one of my favorite words. Somebody says, well, I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to create this. Say, so, well, you need to be intentional about it. Yeah. And you need to put in the building blocks that are going to set it up for success. Mm-hmm. It's not just going to be a one off you know, whim and, and, or it's going to be a one-off phrase that we put out there. It's going to be our goal for the year. You have to have, you got to be intentional, have some building blocks behind it yeah. and be able to communicate that and how we're all going to be successful at this, yeah. whatever so that goal or vision may be. Tell me more how you um, really help organizations really um, recruit talent and not just looking at potential, but actually getting a person who's going to start coming in and making an impact in their organizations and somebody who has the skill set to do yeah. what they're looking for. And so we know talent is huge for organizations. Right. And so what is it What is it that you try to work with organizations on how to help them with that? Yeah, that's, um, that's a great question. And it can look a little bit different depending on the organization that you're working with. But I go back to, uh, I do this training that is specific to interviewing. And one of my favorite questions to ask, but it's very scary for a business owner to ask this because you're looking across the table mm-hmm. and somebody that is, that's interviewing for, for this position and you see someone that's going to fulfill a role that's a need, which means that chances are whatever that role is, whatever that need is, somebody else is doing that right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, we don't just let it sit there. So there's a lot of reasons to say, yes, we want to hire you. This is, this is going to be it. But the question that we forget to ask, that's probably the most important is what does that individual see in us that they're not getting where they're already at? Right. And that's, that's tough. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's tough to ask that question. You know, what are, what are you looking for here that you're not receiving? And to be able to ask that question in a way to where you're not doing a full on sales job for your company that we don't want to ever assume that we're all things to all people, you know, that we're, you know, we're going to have the answers of what you're looking for. Um, but really have them being able to answer that question. And then for you to be able to hear that answer and recognize, okay, we do offer that, or you know what, 
that, you know, we don't, yeah. you know, we're not there yet. And so you're kind of setting them up for failure and you're setting yourself up just to be in the same position six months from now, yeah. if you try to convince yourself otherwise. Yeah, I, I've seen this idea and I think it's a, a great idea, um, really flipping what we do in exit interviews and do it at the front. Yeah. So for example, what yeah. what what do you need for you to be successful yes. in this organization? Or we asked that at the exit interview, what would you have needed? What would you have needed, needed for you to be <laughs> successful? And we could have maybe asked that up front in the interview. And that would have told us a lot about Absolutely. what that person needed in order for them to be successful in that organization. Even more so, and, and I'll take it even a step further, something that we've started doing with our with our businesses, and I've started incorporating this into more trainings, is uh, doing stay interviews. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes we forget just to talk to our employees, it goes back to communication. They're right here. They're here every day. And just just ask them, if you were, if you were thinking about going somewhere tomorrow, if you were to entertain that, what would you be looking for that we're not offering? Mm -hmm. And just hear what it is. Let's hear the consensus. Let's talk to our to our employees and see what, and, and maybe there is something there. Maybe there is a suggestion that comes from that, that we can take a step back and be like, you know, we, we were going to invest in this area, but our employees are saying they'd rather have this. Yeah. I mean, that's a win-win, right? Yeah. And then spending money on something nobody really is kind of, oh, that's great, but they don't, fully get the benefit yeah. of what they're looking for. Yeah. Absolutely. Good. Yeah. So communication. I want to uh, uh, sort of go into culture because your background is in culture, sure. right? And so one of the reasons um, that I started this uh, podcast is uh, because of my background of really diving into uh, work-life integration. And one of the ideas behind uh, work-life integration is when you do the research is that um, attitudes in one role um, can positively spill over into another role. Right. And so that's why I call this podcast the spillover effect. And what that means is, um, are you creating um, an environment and a culture where people are having um, really good, positive experiences? And if they have positive experiences, then those things will spill over to other areas yeah. of their life, right? That's right. But there's a flip side to that too. Because if I have very negative experiences at work or very negative experiences within your organizations, can those things spill over into your your life, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And so that's why um, I really dive into work-life integration because I believe um, all our life is very integrated. And I like so that. culture, talking about culture and organizations... What is it, um, your idea and your philosophy about culture and why is it something that you're very passionate about? <laughs> well, it's, um, you know, it's culture can sometimes be a little bit of a buzzword mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. and it's a good buzzword, but yeah. it's, it is a buzzword and it's, um, you know, I'll use an example of whenever, you know, a lot of the conversations I have on the front end with business owners, you know, they, bring in HR into the workplace. So I always tell me like, Matt, yeah, we want you to come in, but don't mess with the culture. Mm -hmm. And then I always ask them, say, okay, well, tell me what, what is your culture? And, right. and it's amazing how many, um, we like to say it. We like to, yeah. you know, put it out there, but we really can't define it yeah. and what that looks like. And so for me, um, I'm a big believer in, in any type of trainings that I do or anything we talk about, conversations that we have, I feel like there has to be a baseline. There's something that we measure against that we build off of. It kind of goes back to laying that foundation so that we can really get out there and run mm -hmm. in our business or in our lives and what that looks like. And we, you know, taking it to the light, to our personal side outside of work, um, you know, we have those values, right? Something that we're, that tells us a little bit of right and wrong and where we're going and the decisions that we make. Mm -hmm. And, um, and for the workplace, I think it comes down to these four things and it, it's creating a safe, retaliatory free, discriminatory free, and harassment free work environment. Mm -hmm. And when you talk about building culture and you talk about building policies and you talk about having values, there's your baseline. And to be able to, as we, as we start incorporating these things into our business, um, that we're still, we're measuring against that and we're building on that. Cause what that does, does a couple of things and talking about the spillover, it allows employees to truly feel like they can voice what's going on and what they like, or maybe they think this isn't working because 
they don't have a, a fear of retaliation. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have a fear of, of, of maybe what they've experienced uh, somewhere else. Yeah. And, and there's, a, there's a term for that. Um, it's called psychological safety. There you go. Yeah. When you Absolutely. Have, when you, as an employee, can express myself without being penalized for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. But we and and we see this and that's where, um, you know, this is a, kind of a sad example. It, it is an, an example and it's uh, one that I'm very familiar with. And that is, uh, you know, you have a, a business that is very good about external culture projection. So, you know, we're a family first company mm -hmm. and, and, you know, greatest places to work and, you know, very, very external uh, but then you walk into the house and, and it's not as clean Yeah. and, and it says something and, you know, speaking about family first, uh, to be able to really bring that into your culture on the internal side, um, an example that I'm going with here is, you know, somebody that is, uh, that's pregnant or, you know, just had a child and employees being able to see how, the company treats that individual. Absolutely. And that moment right there will define your recruiting strategy, mm -hmm. your the exodus that may take place, or it'll define this is where I'm going to work the rest of my life. And, and I can't wait to start my family while I work here. And if you say here. we are family first, it yeah. says that our culture is really family first. That's right. And so that's where... That's what culture really is. When I think of culture is culture is really um, uh, not what you state, but what the real behavior is. That's right. Yeah, Because you can you can put the mission statement That's and the right. values, but if it's not really embedded as a part of, of a behavior and attitudes in your organization, it doesn't matter how much uh, values or we're, we're all about family That's or right. we're all about integrity or we're all about social responsibility. And if, if those things are not embedded in your, um, as a behavior and attitudes in your organization, doesn't yes. matter what you put up. I always look at it, a uh, culture, like say you go to somebody's home and they have, um, a sign that says shoes off. When you come in our mm -hmm. house, shoes off. Yeah. But when I walk into your house, <laughs> Everybody has Everybody's shoes got their shoes on. Everybody uh, for has sure. their shoes yeah, on. Yeah. And so you can have the sign shoes off, yeah. but your culture is everybody has their shoes on in the that's house. Right. And so that's what culture really is. You know, I uh, <laughs> I, I put it very simply because um, I some I'll talk to some people and be like, well, we don't really have a defined culture or we don't have a defined policy. And I, and I let them know right on the front end, it's like, you know, you actually do. Mm -hmm. And your employees see it. And I said, it's as simple as this. Culture can be just looking around. I can go into any business and it's the actions in response to others' actions. Mm -hmm. What happens in that moment when somebody does something or doesn't do something and the reaction to that action that is setting the tone that is setting the baseline of everything going forward yeah. and to take it a step further, you know, what we ignore, we empower. Yeah. And that, that is, that could never be so true, yeah. especially in organizations because we say, Oh, I don't have time to deal with that. Well, when you push that and put that on a shelf, your employees that see that, yeah. they said that sets the benchmark for, okay, so this is where I work. Yeah. This is how it's actually done. And this is another thing about the spillover effect in terms of you're talking about culture and we're talking about your environment and your behaviors and attitudes is that spills over into the community because if right. you're trying to recruit. Yes. And uh, your employees are supposed to be the evangelists for your organization. They're your they're best gonna, recruiter. Yeah, they're going to evangelize what's really because because they're because they're going yeah. they're going to tell people what's really going on in your yeah. organization. And so I think people yeah. got to be careful about um, you know we say we're there's certain culture, but yeah. the reality of it is you know what I, I call it word on the street. So what's the word on the street so about the your about street? your organization? Yeah. And so the reality of it is your employees are going to be um, really saying what's really going on. And that's going to be the word of the street of your organization. And nobody's going to really want to come and work for you. And so I think it's really right. important that 
those behaviors and attitudes and those um, those things that you really want um, to be known out in the community, it has to be implemented in your organization. One hundred percent. If you yeah. if you go, uh, you know, that can be really difficult to do sometimes. But if you're a company that is in a high growth mode mm -hmm. and you're hiring and you've got open positions, and I mean it's it's obvious that you need to bring people in, and your employees are not referring anybody into the business. Mm -hmm. There's something to look yeah, at there. That's good. That is that's, that's a good. conversation that needs to take place. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a really hard thing to do. Yeah, very yeah. very hard. Culture, culture is is huge. It um, is. It's not. It's, it's a big piece of the pie. It's not the whole pie, but it's a big piece. And so one of the things um, with me doing uh, trainings is I have to be really careful about coming to do trainings in a culture that don't support the trainings. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so, I do, no. Yeah. And so because <laughs> I, what, I've been in that what it room. is, is that we're just doing, you just it's put awkward. a Band-Aid on it, right? That's right. And so it has to be a, a culture that really supports the training, really yes. uh, believes in um, what I'm trying to do, really believes in yeah. what I'm trying to get your employees to um, get the best out of them. And That's so, right. But if their culture is not really fit for that, you know, um, yeah. it's just not going to work. Right? It's not going to work. And, and uh, it sounds like you've probably had that same feeling that I've had where I've been brought in into an organization and you do some type of some type of training and, you know, going out the door that the employees are the ones saying, well, that was fun, but that's not how we work here. Yeah. So it just and it's going to go right back to whatever yeah. it was, because what we've done <clears throat> is we've just checked the box, yeah. right? We've just checked the box. Yeah. So this is, we were supposed to have harassment training once a year. It's been a couple of years. Let's yeah. get somebody in here to do that. Yeah. And then uh, and then right back to status quo, no policy yeah. changes, no no real. And you have to be careful because you know. it, it becomes like a, <laughs> a conference. I love conferences. Yes. I get to speak at conferences and, and sure. do workshops on conferences. But people are like fired up, you know? Oh yeah. And then uh, yeah. six months later, what do we know what happens with? <laughs> After they've been to the conference, well, yeah. that's uh, it's it seems they it, tend to lose they lose, lose that, it. that fire, and yeah. that's where you know I kind of go back to this when it comes to culture. We we talked about this earlier. Is you have to be intentional. Mm -hmm. If you're not, it's great to go get fired up. It's great to go to those conferences. I love speaking at them too. It's mm -hmm. great to have that engagement. But I never uh, end an event or anything that I do and say if this is really important to you, you have to be intentional about it. You have to really have the conversations that maybe you haven't wanted to have yeah. and and take that back and, and really communicate again. Yeah. Talk to your employees. Talk to your employees. That's right. And what where is, are we going to do? What is um, in, in terms of culture, when do, when do you do see what's going on there? What are some of the ways that we can really help? organizations really make that turn and say, okay, let's go towards a very, I know we might have some things that's not working. What can we do to make that turn to go towards a more positive uh, workplace yeah. for employees? What kind of things would you suggest to somebody? So you, you can't, um, you can't do it all at once. It's too overwhelming. It's, it's, culture is complicated. It is yeah. so complicated. It's very complicated. And, and that's where it's, it is, it truly is about small victories. Mm -hmm. And a that's lot good. of times it's, and because there's, and unfortunately it's going to be probably a terrible answer to your question, but, you know, because it is going to be different, you know, organization, organization, but the, the, the similar theme between each of them is looking at their communication methods. Mm -hmm. Let, let's look at the channels that we're currently using and, and, Let's start there. What makes the most sense to where we say we have a, an open door policy, mm -hmm. but what what does that really look like? And and how are we communicating with our employees? And what's the one change that we can do a little bit better? And maybe it's just communicating the success in the business and how our employees are doing because we haven't done that. Mm -hmm. We've been so busy and we've been making money and we're, you know, we're just wearing people out, but we haven't really taken a pause to to celebrate yeah. and and really talk about the impact and just just have that moment. And then how can we build on that moment? Mm -hmm. And how can we make sure this isn't just a flash in the pan moment that we can truly start putting some bo blocks in place and, and start there? Yeah. Uh, but you definitely can't go in for a full overhaul. I mean, mm -hmm. that's 
it, it's it's too it's just, much. Yeah, it's, it's overwhelming. Much. And and even from an employee side of things, it can look fake. Yeah. It's like what, what where am I at today? Yeah, that's good. And and, yeah. and and making them involved in the change and saying, hey, we're going to start doing a few things a little bit different. We're going to change the way we do our evaluations. We're going to mm-hmm. change the way we communicate. But and we're, but we're going to start here, right? And, and we want you to be a part of that and let us know what you think about that. Yeah, I like I like that. I really like that. You know, really starting off small yeah. and not trying to big make those big big leaps and jumps as because because when you try to do that, you get a, you're going to get a lot of pushback. Oh, um, for sure. And change is we know change is not not easy, right? No. Like what we're trying to do is yeah. is really change. Uh, what's right. going on within an organization, and that's not an easy task. And so I think I think you're right in terms of really starting <laughs> starting small, just yeah. just implementing maybe one thing every six months might help, or you know, right. and seeing how it's going, and going there, yeah, and you're not always and in, getting some getting some feedback, get some feedback. Yeah, get some feedback you're not, on that. You're yeah. not going to get it right every time, yeah. And and that's where and that's why that feedback is important. Don't. Mm-hmm. It's uh, too often, you know, we have that great idea. This is going to be perfect. And we (laughs) run with it and we kind of leave everybody else behind. I mean, we don't really get their input or feedback, opinions on it. Mm -hmm. And and you're kind of out there running alone and you're not going to win that way. Yeah. And uh, and that's that's where you're going to you're going to suffer some unnecessary heartache in the long term for sure. Yeah, it's just it's just a very complicated thing. But I definitely like, you know, uh, starting off starting off small. And yeah. so um, as we uh, get ready to uh, finish up, we're going to just do a little lightning oh, round. lightning round. <laughs> and so um, okay. I'm just going to ha- ask you a few few questions and okay. uh, you just give me give me your answer. All right. And so um, if money and time was no object, what would you be doing right now? <laughs> I... Uh... You know what? This is, this is going to sound cheesy, but I'd be doing exactly what I'm doing now because this is this is my dream to set out and start a business like this and do what I do. Um, but I'd give it away for free. Okay. You know, I mean, it's part it's my living, and so it is what it is. But I, uh, but yeah, I, I don't think I ever want to stop. You know, creating and working with businesses. I mean, it's it's truly a passion. Okay. Sporting event or live concert? <laughs> That's tough. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I want to. I want to go live concert. Live I want to go concert? live concert. But there's, I tell you what, there's something to be said about a good baseball game. I really do enjoy just just kicking back. You and, got a favorite team? And uh, you know, I am a. Oh, this may hurt me on the the viewership here, but uh, I, I uh, I'm a big Yankees fan. Big Yankees yeah, fan. Yeah, that goes back to my grandparents are Yankee fans. My parents are Yankee fans. I grew up a Yankee fan. I mean, we are in Oklahoma. I mean, Mickey oh, Mantle, Bobby yeah. Mercer, come on. Uh, so we have some ties here, but, uh, you know, they're about to go to the postseason. I'm pretty excited about that. Awesome. So, yeah. Uh, what is the best piece of advice you ever received? Listen. Listen. Oh, to listen. Good. Yes. Yeah. And I uh, learned that from my, from my parents and uh, uh, learned a very good lesson about listening uh, right out of college in my first job and and uh, that is something that uh, that I've taken with me and hopefully continue to to speak about. And uh, as I'm going through dealing with uh, leadership trainings of, of that nature, I always start with listen. Good. On a scale of one to 10, how good are you at keeping secrets? <laughs> I'm gonna say a ten. A ten. I'm okay. going ten. I'm going ten. I, I uh, obviously can't tell the story, uh, but I just real briefly. I know it's a lightning round, but I remember when I was younger. Um, you know, for me, it was just it was never a thing. You know, somebody say, "Hey, you need to you know keep this a secret." And obviously, I knew what you sh- what you you know shouldn't keep a secret. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, if obviously somebody if it involves somebody's life or danger or something like that. But uh, I remember my grandma told me a secret one time. And she goes, no, don't, don't tell anybody. Uh-huh. And for me, it's like, okay. okay. And I yeah. just went on with life. And I remember one day my, my parents were having a conversation and they, they made that comment like, oh yeah, you know, my mom said this today, their mom. And, uh, and I just remember going, oh yeah, I knew that. And then they looked at me like, you knew that? <laughs> you knew that. It's like, yeah. why didn't you tell us? I'm like, well, That's they good. told me not to. But I, <laughs> it did, didn't, yeah. <laughs> If you could have dinner with anyone from history, who would it be? <laughs> That's easy. Miles Davis. Miles Davis. Miles Davis. Really? Why day. Miles Davis? Yeah, I'm a uh, big jazz fan. So when I went to UCO as a jazz uh, trumpet player, so he's always been somebody that I've listened to, uh, read his autobiography, and and uh, just to be able to, you know, the life that, that he lived and, and what, you know, some of the things that he went through in that autobi- autobiography and just his 
is just outlook on, on music and improvisation. And, and I even feel like I bring that into my business. You know, we don't ever want to be doing the same things over and over. We always got to be thinking ahead. And I feel like that, that improvisational style and mindset and the way that he saw things, um, I would just love to, to have that conversation or uh, really just sit there and just uh, be in his presence. Be good yeah, enough for that's me. That's awesome. So. Which is better, a book or a movie? I'm a movie guy. Okay. Yeah. I, I love popcorn. Uh -huh. Okay. So that's one of my guilty pleasures. And uh, there's, for me, I, I uh, yeah, I love, uh, I love, I love the movies. Just yeah. kind of a little step away for me. Awesome. And uh, And I have no problem, you know, even uh, going to movies by myself. Like, oh. you know, I'm one of those individuals. I'm okay with that. Okay. Yeah. Last one. If you could change one thing about the workplace, what would it be? Removing fear. I think a lot of, um, you know, a lot of the mistakes that that we make in management, a lot of mistakes that we make uh, in culture and what we talk about here is uh, is the fear of the unknown, the fear of um, are we training somebody to be my replacement, the fear of all these things. And if we can just remove that and open up that communication corridor that um, I think we'd be amazed at how fast we can get out there and run and what we can do for individuals and how we can spill over into others' lives. Good. It'd be huge. So how can people reach you, Matt? Uh, best way to, to get in touch with me, obviously my LinkedIn. Uh, you can go out there and follow my personal page, Matt Tipton, and also tell you, you know, where I'm going to be right out there right now. It says I'm here yeah. so they can see what's going on. Uh, my website is a uh, YHR, W-H-Y-H-R dot guru. And uh, it has a lot of my, doesn't have, it's not all inclusive, but certainly if there's any type of leadership or education or trainings, I've got a lot of them up there. Uh, reach out to me through the info page and uh, I'm pretty accessible. So, you know, just send me a message. I, I uh, one of the things that I try to think I pride myself on is I'm gonna get back to you. Yeah. I'm gonna communicate with you and um, I love to I love to listen and talk business. Yeah. So those are the best ways. Follow, <laughs> You can also follow me on Facebook as far as our YHR page mm -hmm. on Facebook, um, Twitter, as well as uh, LinkedIn. Yeah. Yeah. Business page. Well, thank you for coming on the podcast. Man. Thank you. Thank I mean, you. I, I uh, just just since uh, we've met and yeah. getting a chance to, to, to know each other and, uh, you know, I've looked at what you're doing out there and I'm just uh, I'm blown away. Uh, just your impact in the community. And it's it's truly an honor and a pleasure to be here. Yeah. I appreciate thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, man. we got it. Take care. Yeah.